Google Data Studio releases updates maybe every week, and we keep track of them through blog posts, through videos and everything. And two times every year, we make a video summarizing all the main updates that happen in the Data Studio. And ecosystem. today is the day, right? Today is the day. So we're going to make a video listing all the main updates that were taking place and the ones that we consider the most important and join us as we go through them. Hi everybody, we are back today. Alex, Thomas, Ricardo. Hi guys. All three again. All three. We had a couple of video sessions, two of us, the two of you, and now we're back. And it was important for that the three of us are together because today is our session to go through the main updates that happened in Data Studio the last six months, mm -hmm. which is also a good moment for uh, also the two of us to catch up because you're the one <laughs> you're the one who's keeping track with absolutely everything. And when we were reviewing our long pre-production meeting, we were just checking what was happening there. And I think the two of us were like, "Oh yeah, that is that right? <laughs> is that new? Oh, nice, nice, nice." Yeah. So we learned a lot already while going through the summary of all the points. Yeah, so we're happy to start now with the points there and in the round of experts. In the round of experts, <laughs> of course. But like, like we often say, no, like Data Studio is switching and evolving quite often, and in many ways, there's new additions that come that make life easier, but there's also things to keep in track of that they're changing because they really adjust how the workflow is, is going. No? Uh, one of them, for example, is that in the last six months, how the edit mode behaves has been changing. No, like before it was really, you go to edit mode and you can not really adjust what you were looking at. And now you can really move around in the edit mode and make it see like the filtering reports and there's also an, another changes another few changes that happened no? yeah so um in the edit mode and also in the embedded mode and i think it's even more important than the embedded mode if you still use it um that you also now have the page navigation so if you don't have like we have for all of the reports we are already working on um, we have our own um, navigation inside the reporting but if you still use the data studio ones in the edit mode and in the embedded mode um, it was not a not possible to show the the um, yeah the page navigation from Data Studio. And now it's possible. So in the edit mode, you still you can um, enable it by just some clicks. And then on the left side, it shows then the yeah the page navigation and also in the embedded mode. Especially in the embedded mode, if you don't have your own navigation, you just have these small um, arrows at the bottom to, and to switch. And it's way better now. Yeah, yeah it's way better. And now. now you just show then on the left side the page navigation yeah. or even in the tabs. So as you like, all the, the options are possible. But it um, still shows yeah. forever, no? Like you cannot um, bring it up. Yes, and down. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, as we said, so usually we sh we use our own navigation already. We have a quite good template for that, for all of the um, reports. But yes, if you still use the Data Studio um, native navigation um, with all the possibilities, then. So maybe to quickly explain that, um, what we are doing is uh, basically then uh, in the report, having basically a small, let's say, rectangle where links were put over it and uh, then you can basically click them. So you can basically easily build your own navigation. Um, do we have a blog post for that? Of Alex? course, I think more than one. But Very there's, good. for example, one thing which we sometimes recognize um, when you use the, um, so when you put a text field, right? And then you, then you can add a link behind it. And when you use the Data Studio default ones, so then when you're clicking on the, on the text field, clicking on the link symbol on the right side, um, and then it shows showing the text and what is the link behind. Same. And when you tie, when you um, select the the, um, the field where you can select the link, um, then it shows also the possibilities pages. to all the pages. Mm -hmm. When right. you select, for example, one page and then show some text behind. And sometimes when you click on these, it just sometimes happens out of random. Sometimes it shows then a zero a four zero four page. Mm -hmm. Really? Did okay, you, I never had did that. You, did you always no. recognize it? I never had that. So I'm using it then... quite often, but uh, this I never experienced. Okay. 
So what? then in the in the in the URL it just shows the dynamical link. So not the whole report, it just mm -hmm. shows the dynamical link of the Strange. of the of the of the uh, URL. Maybe it just happens also for some no. browser the, the, the settings. Issues I don't know. And the problems I have when basically I take a text, put a link behind that to a certain page, give it another name, which then is shown um, in the text box. And then I would like to um, remove the underline um, and I would like to change the color of the text. Mm -hmm. Then sometimes it doesn't work. So um, I basically select the whole text. I try to change the color and the color is just not changing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I need to, so my workaround is selecting all basically characters from the first one till the second last. Mm -hmm. They're changing. And then do the same with basically the last mm -hmm. character or something. This is working. But if you basically click on the whole text box, it's sometimes not working. And if you basically select the whole, basically uh, it's like all characters is also sometimes not working mm -hmm. for whatever reason. If you go from black to white in terms of uh, font color, it shows already white, but the text is not shown white. So there's some random bug inside. It's not a big problem, but sometimes it's well, what uh, How I um, also improved it a little bit is to change the report theme for that. So there in the report theme, so you can use one from Data Studio directly, or you can also create your custom one. We already discussed it, I think, in one of the best practices, Data mm -hmm. Studio. Um, and there you can also choose the color of the link the first time, and also when you clicked on it. Exactly. So usually it's blue, uh, when you use it ah, okay. before you also it's purple. One. and it's yeah purple or uh, can you remove or, um, the underline um, no no that's no, not possible no, right that's not possible. but removing underline is always working yeah, uh, that's, that's good yeah, just yeah. the text uh, the, the, the the colors, yeah. but we drifted a little bit away yeah, um, yeah, yeah. to, to, to <laughs> navigation so I'm um, talking about like this so, so, uh, no so so because <laughs> Alex when, is the when, one who is basically interrupting <laughs> today. <laughs> I just want to say because when you also have these problems with the navigation, what I said, so that you get sometimes then a four zero four page, um, then we at, at least I always put the direct link to it. So the whole data studio.google.com yeah. slash and the page and so on report ID everything yeah. like that, um, and then it works. So that works basically. It's not so. So you have to do it one time, and it's not so efficient like when you're just selecting the page. But that works at least for me better. But yes. So going away from navigation, talked about that. So in edit mode, we can basically have the navigation or embedded mode. What about editing fields? I think um, Alex has a lot of uh, a lot of topics about that because there are good things but there are also bad things with uh, that you basically that they change the edit mode a little bit in terms of filters and other things mm -hmm. so what can you say about that yeah i think we we talked about it in the things we would like to be changed in data studio yeah. Yeah. about mm -hmm. and it was now it is possible in the edit mode to both adjust what filters are being uh, selected, how you're navigating through through it and the report moves as if you were using into view mode what is the challenge there is that when you're adjusting things around in the report, the last thing you want is for it to click something and this to menu is popping to up. begin. Mm -hmm. uh, menu is popping out. Uh, it starts filtering and everything changes how it looks. So that will be a bit of a. I think we suggested to have a on. Yeah, that uh, you like the idea. Yeah. yeah. So that you say that you can enable it quickly or disable it. Yeah. Um, that, like that, that that in the report settings would be the uh, best place, right? You have basically activating. How do you say yeah. that? Uh, opening filters in the edit mode. Exactly. Yeah. Someone yeah. need to find a good name but for that. that. Does, yeah. But we need, but <laughs> we need to turn on, turn off for that. Yeah. So that those are the first two two points there that the two of the uh, of the changes that happened. One maybe smaller one I think you were uh, mentioning in the preparation was the how the whole searching through dashboards in the homepage. Uh, yes. works now. The... Yeah. So they changed it now a little bit. I think also aligning it a little bit more to Google Drive and so on that you can now search, for example, for owner. So then you type in owner, um, Colin, and then the name, and then you get all the reports where the owner is for that um, dashboard. And also who shared it with you or other people who have access to it and so on. So you have some 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 terms you can put into with some names or something. And then, yeah, so they improve the whole search. Can you, can you sort based on created? Mm, I think due to that, uh, I'm, I'm not sure when it's so, right? possible before, then I think due to that, they just changed the search. This is the same option. with uh, Google spreadsheets, yeah. Google documents, and so on, that you always have this last 
updated or last updated sorry, interaction. Yeah. And sometimes it's really annoying because you would like to see what were the basically documents which got created yeah. like last. And uh, this is not possible. I think it's same mm. for Data Studio. Yeah. You can check that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just to quickly mention it. <laughs> Done. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. Next point. <laughs> Next point. Uh, data update frequency. I think we even made maybe a video almost exclusively <laughs> uh, about this. Uh, who wants to take it? Yes. So also for BigQuery and they also added then also for other um, services, um, which I didn't really recognize, um, but especially for BigQuery because there they also started with, um, before it was possible to refresh the data every hour. hour? Yeah. Um, yes. And now you can do some kind of near real time, you can say, so you can update your data in the data studio dashboard or the data source um, every minute if you want. Okay. Um, ah, I think yeah. there was, I think, I think it was 15 minutes um, uh, beforehand possible. Could be. Yeah, I think it, it was moving from one hour to 15 and now it's possible every minute. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Very good. Um, yes. So now you can do something like near real time reporting, I would say. Um, yeah, it's maybe not so uh, good as maybe other tools, which are really focusing on real-time reporting for sure. But it's a good, yeah, I th good, I think, good I think thing. Data Studio will never be made for real-time, right? Um, but yeah, would be good. And I think every minute is obviously way better than every 15 minutes or every hour, because normally you don't need basically data. More. Yeah. yeah. Except if you have a real, <laughs> a real real time case, right? Yeah. Which is normally in e commerce or SaaS or whatever reporting, yeah. not 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 not. But just to say it again, and we mention it costs. all the time, yeah. costs. costs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very so, important. Yeah. So check your always costs. Then when you, you when the data source is refreshing or the data is refreshing, you always send queries to BigQuery, um, and that costs. Um, yeah. yeah. So and for sure that you have to check. I think there's even a pop up now. Like it comes up and it yeah, says like so, yeah, yeah. you are yeah. about to activate yeah. every minute. It depends yeah. also. I mean, is it is it working for every data source or only for BigQuery? Because no, I could so. also imagine that if you connect it to free data sources, like for example Google Analytics, where Google is paying basically um, mm -hmm. all the calculation costs, this we could check, right? If so, it's yeah, also I know it. So it's so. Oh, I quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. I checked it <laughs> in uh, real time. So it's for uh, MySQL, for Postgres SQL, for MS SQL Server, Amazon Redshift, Cloud SQL for MySQL, Google Cloud, um, yeah, for MySQL. Google Cloud Storage, I even didn't know that you can connect data you, studio yeah, you can, you Cloud can, Storage. You can, you can. But yes, and Cloud Spanner. Um, yes, but all the services which you are also paying for queries, <laughs> it's also... We make it easy for you. So <laughs> <laughs> when you basically pay for the service, you can do basically, you yeah. can do it every minute. Yeah. Um, uh, if you basically uh, use a service from provided by Google, you can not do it every minute. <laughs> Uh, yes. Easy math. If you pay for that, you can do it. But quite cool that they also do. Yeah, definitely, other, definitely, yes, definitely yes, um, yeah. So, yes. So that uh, maybe some 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 tip at that point, right? If you do that, and if you, if you use BigQuery, definitely partition your data based on at least the day, mm -hmm. right? Because if you do that, and if you basically date or day, um, uh, your date is basically the main the main time dimension. And yes. it's partitioned, then uh, it's not that expensive. Yeah, so that's the thing, right? So you can even do it per hour, right? In the meantime, mm -hmm. um, I think as of last year. I'm just not sometimes a big fan of partitioning the table or use the partition um, in Data Studio due to that you cannot then change the date range dimension. Um, so sometimes in the table you have, especially for orders or something, you have sometimes the order created, but you want to also see sometimes the shipping date or something. Yes. Um, and then in the pro tip for everyone else, if you do that, take your basically prepare your data source um, in BigQuery. And then as the second step, take basically the table which was transformed and created and create it again as a duplication with a different time dimension. And then in Data Studio, you can basically connect to both data sources you need to make sure that basically both are exactly the same, right? And you can easily do that by saying, okay, I transform everything. The table is there. It's basically, let's say, um, partitioned based on order date. And then you copy or you recreate the table with a different name and you partition that one by shipping date, for example. And then you can exit both tables. That only makes sense if you really use it on an update for every minute because otherwise 
the whole cost of creating the table and so on. And if you have to create and calculate fields, you have to create it in both. So exactly, oh, yes. exactly. Yeah. So when the cost is really a big thing, um, yeah. then you then you can do it like that. Yes. Um, okay. Then I yeah. think one more. Um, because it's also a bigger topic, I think, data blending. Data blending, let's go. Um, Thomas I'm out of data blending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas to say, don't use data blending um, in Data Studio. Um, yes, but they improved it in a big ways. So before it was just possible to left join your data um, in, in Data Studio, I think five data sources, I think. Um, and now it's possible to do left join, inner join, right join, full join, cross join, I think, all of them. Um, Yes, so all of that. And you can also you can show it quickly in the screencast. So you also have better view. So you have two data sources and then in the middle, you can choose your um, join um, mm -hmm. type and also the joining conditions, so the keys. Um, so that the way also in handling all of that stuff, it's way better. For example, before you also had, I think when you have three data sources, every um, field has to be in every data source and so on that they are joining correctly. Now you can select for every join which keys they should have and which are, have to join oh, and matching. So way better. Um, yes, but maybe we can also quickly talk or Thomas can... You, you don't need it, but <laughs> it's good that it's there now. <laughs> no, kidding. Um, I, th I think, I mean, for us that we use BigQuery as our main source, single uh, source of truth, single point of truth, of course, we don't like blending, but um, for everyone else who has no data warehouse in the background, no BigQuery, it's of course a super valuable feature. And of course, you need to keep in mind that yeah, everything is then in, 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 in Data Studio. Um, and if you, for example, have your data science team and would like to basically also have access to data, that's then not working, right? But uh, maybe that's an also not the primary reason why you do it. Yeah, so usually we join all our data and transform it already in BigQuery. The only thing which I, I think I used blending in one or two cases is for self-joining stuff due to that you then improve your um, yeah your, your, your visualizations. Um, because, for example, we had... But yeah, we Can you give an podcast. example? Yeah. So we had this one thing where we also used this one minute refresh of data and there we also then due to that there's a lot of data, um, we also transform our data every day, but just for the current day. Um, and then we also just change in BigQuery the partition of today and always get out of the current partition and change it or add the new ones with the new data. Um, and there, um, for example, when the, for example, we had it for articles, for a newsletter, and when one, at one day the or for two days, the article name changed, um, then in the current partition, it's already the new name, but in all of the um, articles before, when you when the uh, article was already published yesterday, for example, uh, the okay. old um, article name was still inside. And then you have for one article, two article names, but you cannot change it. Oh, that that um, is a that is a super good um, example. And then you Very do a self-join uh, in Data Studio where I just select in one case, just the data of today, yeah. and then do yeah. there the... Because the, the problem is, if you do that in BigQuery, then uh, there's 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 one thing you have to update basically all the historical data yeah. right yeah. And, and if if it's a very big data source at the end and with like terabytes of data and you need to change it for every day or every minute maybe mm -hmm. for that's not working so yeah. you basically update your daily data every minute also in bigquery you need to do that if if it should be updated in data studio it also needs to be updated in bigquery every minute and um, then only do it for the current partition, as Alex said, and um, then join basically the article name in the blending. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think we already mentioned wrap four or five yeah. of the of the main ones. We will continue then in the next video to wrap up on the main updates of Data Studio of the first half of the year. Alex. Yes. What, what, if, what if someone <laughs> if someone needs to does not want to wait until six months to see the main updates and be keeping up to date in a more uh, fresh way for, for our for our uh, followers uh, have a good time uh, see you next time and Alex for the new <laughs> listeners uh, basically <laughs> tell yeah. where they can basically do something so yeah so you can check out um, Medium um, there we as Ricardo said we already publish every month the newest stuff from the last month. Um, yes, so that's the most important one. Then uh, LinkedIn, we also publish when there are big, big announcements also there for BigQuery Data Studio, GA4, GTM and so on. 
Um, yes, newsletter we still have, um, new analytics stuff. Um, YouTube, subscribe to our channel, check out the other um, videos. As we said, we also keeping updating um, the latest updates, um, news. Yes. Good. Perfect. Then thanks everybody. And until next week, have a great day. Bye.